Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 5 of the Netherlands. Right now we're looking at what's actually going to be called Marktkirk, uh, Market Church basically, as named by Matthew C. that we built in the last episode. This episode we're going to be going a little bit wider. We're going to work on the canal infrastructure for the city and build a new neighborhood towards a greener side of the canal. So let's get straight into things. Okay, we're back here. I know it's been a while since the last episode of this series, but um, I've been trying to figure out exactly what I wanted this episode to look like. Um, I've really been enjoying Columbia City, and there's just kind of a bunch of factors why it's been a while. But we're back here. Um, not exactly sure how frequently the series will come out because I'm still really just enjoying expanding Columbia City right now. And I want to make sure that these episodes are you know, given the justice of a little bit of research at least. So um, right now we're working on the canal for the city. As you remember in the second episode, I believe, or the third, one of them, uh, we actually removed the canal that we had built in the first, ep the first episode uh, that was around the, the city center. And um, I never actually replaced it. It was just, it was way too big the the city center was way too big in the in the beginning so i had to uh come back here and make it smaller but we lost all the infrastructure in the in the process there so we're we're here rebuilding that i'm pretty happy with how this ended up turning out in kronigan which is the city we're basing this off of um they they've got a canal that goes sort of around the city center obviously based on the um medieval moat that uh, surrounded the city as was typical for uh, other cities like this and it's got a um the, the canal has a one of the sides is like green rather than there being just infrastructure everywhere like roads right around the canal um it's you know there, there are trees there's some houses stuff like that so i wanted to make sure one of the sides of the canal here was also like that and i decided to do the development that we work on this episode um sort of close to there so I haven't figured out exactly um, how the circulation plan sort of for the for the city is going to work because if you don't know, um, there's like a circulation plan in Kronigan where um, there's cars can't go between the four quarters of the city. They just have to they have to go around the ring road on the edge of the city on the canal. Um, and I'm trying to figure out exactly what that's going to look like infrastructure wise in this city. So. Um, if, if it doesn't look like that's implemented in this episode, that would make sense. I'm basically going to do it later on, probably once I've finished the, um, once I've finished the roads for the city itself, because I don't really want to plan the city as if that is a factor, because it was a system that was kind of added, um, after all of the development of the city. So I'm just going to leave it until the whole city center, the, the core of the city inside of the canal um is developed and then from there i'll go ahead and work on that um system and maybe you guys can help me with that but for now we're just gonna um leave that maybe i'll add some basic traffic restrictions but um the the system itself won't be uh, like all the rules all like all the determinations of which roads are car free and which aren't how that works not determined yet but i think that makes sense basically um what i'm trying to say anyway i added a little bike bridge across the canal there um you saw i added a different bridge before we'll go back and change that to an older looking bridge um the one for cars but i'm i'm not exactly happy with the bridges that i end up placing in this episode um uh, they just don't make perfect sense for the specific area that i'm working on it seems like uh, more canal specific bridges if that makes sense are sort of in order here i'm just not exactly sure how i'm gonna make those and i really wanted to focus on developing you know the neighborhood here rather than the uh, canal itself i tried to just get the basic canal infrastructure laid out and you'll, you'll actually notice that this area is on a slope just because i want the buildings um above the canal on the, the green area just to be higher up 
Um, and I need the road to be like higher up above the canal. It can't just be at the canal level because boats have to go below it. And drawbridges, unfortunately, don't exist in the game. Although we'll probably try to make some makeshift ones because Epic Lurker has some amazing bridge assets and more new, like the canals you're going to see that are not the, the green canals, which are made out of network rivers. The other ones, those are um, very very um needed for the city and then they're actually it's a new asset a wider version of the previous dutch canals and it works better for what we're doing because i'll be able to place houseboats around it and it also implements um a node transitions with network rivers so that's especially convenient <laughs> Hopefully you're enjoying our building placement here. If you are, like would be highly appreciated. That would be great. Um, thanks for all the support on recent videos, YouTube's whole um, tab on the video manager where it shows you how your recent videos have been doing in relation to one another. I kind of hate it, except when videos are doing well and they have been. So, um, you know, it, it, it's nice to see and I really appreciate it. Um, and I'm glad you're I'm glad you're enjoying because I'm definitely definitely enjoying this. I'm having a lot of fun here, and I'm sorry that it's been a while since the last episode, but um, I've just been trying to work on what I'm what I'm enjoying, and I've also been kind of busy, so it has been um, you know more it's made more sense for me to work on Columbia City stuff because it's easier to easier to make. So in a, in a way, I'm kind of just being lazy, but um, yeah, it's uh, the series is going nowhere netherlands is here to stay i love the series and i feel like the scale is perfect the detail um sort of balance is perfect you see i'm experimenting here with these these um bike paths i actually don't do much with them this episode uh, you'll see i actually destroy the infrastructure across the river a little later um but or across the the canal but the those bike paths i just cannot wait to work with them i really want to i'm not sure if i should fully finish the city center before i work on some newer stuff my um my previous plan was just to build everything in generally chronological order like obviously i'm not going to just delete buildings and place newer buildings progressively but uh more like just generally build the areas that were developed earlier before the newer areas um and maybe just to have that be a more organic way to let the city grow because it it naturally will end up being more realistic that way but i'm just kind of wondering what you think so if you could give me some feedback on what you think i should do there that'd be great because i really want to start moving out into some of the post-war areas that have really really interesting um, bike infrastructure some arterial roads um, that are, have been like retrofitted to be more bike friendly at intersections and all those other special um, features of post-war Dutch planning that I really want to implement here in the city. So along the waterfront here, you can see I'm taking some liberties. Uh, I've made a pretty big park area here with this spire thing in the middle, which is kind of cool. But um, for the most part, it's generally following the the uh, layout of the waterfront in Groningen, uh, but I don't add some things that are in Groningen. Like right, what I what I add here is, is I mostly add these cube houses that you see on the bottom left, and then some row houses. Um, the cube houses are architecturally not perfect for this Dutch style, but they work pretty well. And Titan did a really good job on those. It's just they're they're definitely the best. Um, I've got for this area of these like big old mansion type houses um, I, I don't add certain things though and I will add those on the other side of the bridge in a future episode I know a big landmark of Groningen is the Groninger Museum I believe it's called um, which is basically a like modern art and history museum from what I can tell um, so I, I definitely will implement something like that in the future OK, 
Okay, now it is time for the Q&A segment where you ask your questions in the comments with hashtag Q&A and I answer as many as I can. A lot of these are going to come from Columbia City videos and I think maybe all of them. I don't know if I've done a Q&A in this series yet, but here we go. Um, starting off, the first question is from Cameron Johnston. Uh, are you ever going to build an airport for Columbia City or for the Netherlands? Um, so if you watch Columbia City, you probably know that I'm going to just delay the airport a long time because I'm always lazy and I never like building airports and I don't like dealing with the planes flying around the sky. Um, with the Netherlands, I have no idea. We definitely won't have a big international airport. Maybe we'll have some sort of regional airport here in Fietstad or outside of Fietstad. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, the next question is from Ma Ben. When did you start playing City Skylines? Uh, I started playing City Skylines in November of 2015, which is about five months after... No, actually, more like seven to eight months after the game came out. Something like that. Uh, so actually pretty close to when the game came out, but a lot later than a lot of people actually. Um, next question from Arodi536, would you ever consider playing the game with a more logistical, zone, economy oriented focus with the sprinkling of mods and assets instead of just going all out on the aesthetics? Because I for one am a person who am more enamored with the functionality behind the city rather than its ultra realism. Um, I don't really like playing with the game simulation everything is basically aesthetic and the functionality that i go for is not in the city itself i think it's more in my presentation in my presentation style that i want to focus on functionality and what i mean by that is i want my videos to do something i don't want to simply make videos where i make a pretty city i want you to come out of the video at least understanding um, some aspect of urban planning slightly more in some even just very minute way. I want to do something with my videos, if that makes sense. And that doesn't require um, using the simulation. I don't like using the simulation, really. I just like going for aesthetics to demonstrate things in my videos, if that makes sense. That's more what I'm focused on. So, no, I'm not going to play with money. I'm not going to, you know, play with you know, garbage, death, building abandonment, whatever, that kind of stuff. Uh, just not for me. Next question from Axel is, you haven't made a tutorial in more than a year. Is this something that we should be expecting to come back at one point in the near future? Um, I've basically stopped doing tutorials because I feel like there aren't really any more tutorials to make. And I would really challenge you to find like a tutorial that's missing that I could make that I could contribute with. Uh, I'm just really not sure there is one out there. Like the City Skylines official YouTube channel has everything you need and it's all really concise. It is very uniform. It's very well done and pretty up to date. So I'm really not exactly sure what I could contribute in that department, but I'd totally be open to suggestions. Like I was considering doing a huge tutorial series, just then I realized there's nothing to do it on unless you have any ideas. So let me know in the comments about that. The next question is from Fahad and it is, how do you manage taking classes, playing City Skylines and editing at the same time? Um, That's a really good question. So, I mean, first of all, I can kind of start off with the fact that I don't have a job right now and I'm only taking 13 units. Um, so that helps. My, my school schedule is not insane. Um, I also, I also make sure that I have a very good kind of work life balance or school life balance or whatever you want to call it. I am, it, like, it just makes me not only just feel better, but just work better in the, in the long term when I, when I do that for myself and I'm a very organized person. So I make sure I give myself, um, you know, time off to, to chill. And a lot of, a lot of the time, even though, um, it's like a project that needs to be done, YouTube stuff does take the form of just chilling and it's I'll just play City Skylines on an evening and just like watch Netflix or whatever listen to a YouTube video on the, on the side screen and um, like I don't like just watching something so I'll just tend to um, you know, build stuff while while I'm doing that and that turns into the recording for a video and I have a lot of fun doing it. But yeah, I mean, it definitely I've been struggling with the fact that it, it is kind of an obligation. It's self-imposed, but it's an obligation that I've kind of um, imposed to myself. But a nice thing about it is that, I mean, like I'm 
yeah, like once again, I I'm not working right now. Um, like YouTube's my only source of income, but like it it's enough. Like I don't have to, um, like I can justify not working and kind of enjoying my first semester at college um, because I just have like this side income from YouTube. Like it's not much, but it's enough to be able to justify networking and it's like just amazing to think that i have that for just editing a couple videos recording them in my spare time and just having tons of fun with it like i'm ridiculously grateful for it whenever i think about it i just highly appreciate everyone watching so thank you all so much for your support anyway flyover segment time this is the bridge it's two separate bridges really i'm gonna remove it uh, the bridge on the left over there, it doesn't really look like it fits. Um, it's just there temporarily so cars can go over. This is the um, the uh, waterfront of the canal. I'll change it to make the canal a little bit narrower in the future, but uh, we've also got this area over here. The building on the right is going to be the main university building for the city, although the campus is going to be spread throughout the city. I've just kind of placed that down there. I didn't really detail the block in there, but... It's there, and we'll work on that in a future episode. Probably dedicate a whole episode to that. But yeah, the campus will kind of be spread out throughout the city, if that makes sense. Anyway, here we are. Look at these beautiful treetops here in Fiedstad. I love the colors in this city. I feel like that's half the reason I just ever was craving this project. Um, the colors just look super good. I'm using the Relight North, Relight 2 North lot, I think and with a couple basic adjustments. And I'm using just my ultimate eye candy light settings in the center, if you're wondering. It looks really, really satisfying. Look at all those bikes there. I, I place a bunch of bikes in this episode, but not um, not many. Um, you'll, you'll see that a lot of the streets look kind of barren and I'll, I'll sort of add bikes more in the future. Um, this episode was not as much about the very minute details and more about just getting a neighborhood down. And these cube houses look super cool here. Um, I, I just try to, wanted, wanted to capture this part of the city's history. Uh, there are a bunch of bikes. I'm kind of selecting shots that have bikes in them, if that makes sense. And there are a bunch of bikes sort of gathered over here. But yeah, I got to go back and add bikes to the rest of the, the rest of the district. The waterfront here looks super tranquil. We're going to add houseboats as well, kind of along the, the shoreline itself. I feel like that'd be a nice detail that would make the area kind of pop. And we're going to add houseboats basically everywhere. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to look yet because there are definitely a limited amount of houseboat assets on the workshop. I'm just hoping some have nice color variations or whatever. I haven't actually tried them out yet. We'll have to see. But, uh, but yeah, I guess this episode wasn't as much of a historical exploration into the city and more just uh, getting down some more, some more buildings that are kind of similar to what we've been building, but also a beautiful, beautiful green riverfront, um, taking my own little spin on it, but still building these streets that are going to be fundamental to the city core and are basically just car free, just bikes and bikes and pedestrians beautiful stuff but anyway if you enjoyed like would be highly appreciated and uh if you want to see more subscribe to the channel i definitely appreciate that i think you'd probably appreciate it too if you want to watch more videos if you want to download the save game for the city or um get your name in the credits or get a shout out a uh, quick shout out to forrest corbett joey g matthew zyme robinson griffin and barclay um you can head over to my patreon get some perks over there or if you want to just give me a one-time donation you can head over to my coffee page that's also in the description but anyway i mean that's that's basically it i don't really have anything else to say you can follow me on twitter that's in the description i tweet about bikes cities stuff like that hopefully you enjoyed see you next time